that's in our hearts. We have integrity. We're really doing the deal. We're the real deal. All the way through. Inside and out. You know, think about this question. You know, as, as we're writing this message, the Lord posed a question to us. <coughs> and think about this. It's very interesting. He said, when a man dies, his soul goes either to heaven or hell. And his brain is left here on the earth. You know, when they bury the person. So how is he able to think? So the Lord asked me a question, you know. So I began to think about that. I'm like, oh, you know, it dawns on me, you know. You know, he's able to think. Because he's able to think from his heart. So you can think from your heart as well as from your brain. Just like Jesus said, you know, in the Matthew 15, 19. You know, evil thoughts proceed from the heart. The good thoughts can proceed from the heart, too. Or when uh, Peter confronted uh, Simon the sorcerer, he said, you know, may the Lord forgive you the thought of your heart. So I see you're in the gall of bitterness. You know, forgive the thought of your heart. There was something that was coming out of that man's heart that was a deep thought in his life. It wasn't, it wasn't a good thought. It could have led to his destruction. We need to be people that have thoughts of integrity. We have to have, we be thinking with thoughts of integrity in our hearts. And this is how we have to think, brothers and sisters. This is, because this is, we think from our heart, and this is where the integrity of our heart takes place. Inside, deep inside, not just in our brain. You know, and we also have to think about this as we're talking about integrity of heart, as we're getting a picture of what this integrity of heart is all about. We're touching on different things right now and defining it. Also, because we have a faith-based righteousness and not a works righteousness as, as saved people in the Lord, you know, I mean, we're saved by faith, you know, and sometimes we, we don't, you know, we're not over encumbered about having to do things to please the Lord because we we're in a faith based righteousness you know we get righteousness because we believe in the sacrifice of Jesus and that, that settles it you know but it's it behooves us not to overlook the importance of walking in integrity of heart and and being aware of it and being, letting the Lord do things in our hearts that will cause us to have integrity in our hearts and the reason, the bottom line of all this is that as a person walks in integrity, there are things that flow out of that in their life. Blessings and other things that flow out of having a heart of integrity. And we're going to look at some of those things today in the body of the message. So as we proceed now, let's open our ears and, and our minds and our hearts and let God speak to us about as we walk into everybody, what it will do for us and what we'll see in our lives because of it. <clears throat> yes. Now, walking in integrity of heart, when you do so, you will be preserved. Let's look at Psalm 25, verse 21. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me for I wait on thee. Now as David in the psalm asked the Lord to bring him out of his distresses, you know, that's a little before this, you know, David is doing that, in his desolation and affliction, he waits upon God in the integrity of his heart for deliverance. Now when we are going through things, you know, that are incredible, do we wait upon God and just move in deep and wait for his deliverance? Wait till you have that sense in, of freedom in your spirit that you know that he's heard you. You see, that's what David did. And that's what we're to do more. Go deeper. David, he trusts God to see him through and move on his behalf. Another person we're going to look at is Job <laughs> in regard to um, preservation, it's Job. And we're going to look at Job chapter 2, 3 through 9. Job chapter 
three. Job chapter two, three through nine. Yes. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that fears God and escheweth evil, and still he holds fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause? Verse 4. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man has will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to your face. Verse 6, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth in the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took his potsherd to scrape himself with, and he sat down among the ashes. Now listen to this. Verse 9, Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still remain, retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. Now despite the fact that Job lost all of his flocks, all of his sons and daughters, all of his <coughs> servants, his health, he lost even the support of his wife and even his friends were those miserable comforters. <laughs> What did Job do? He held on to his integrity. In, in spite of all that, have you gone through that much of your life? <laughs> like Job, to that degree? He held on to his integrity. Glory to God, in a horrible situation, which looked <coughs> completely hopeless. And he had integrity of heart, and that preserved him because he he had integrity that he, with God that no matter what, he would trust God. Despite of any circumstances, how horrific they were, he would trust God. And his integrity of heart preserved him, even though he didn't understand why he was going through, what he went through. He held on to his faith in God and his trust in him because of that deep-seated integrity in his heart toward God, he made it through that awful, all those awful tests. And he came out more blessed than before, as we go. So we look, as we look ourselves prophetically into the future, directly ahead of us toward walking in integrity of heart, it is of great importance as the world turns more and more ungodly and looks to persecute the saints. Just what they got plans, you know. <laughs> the enemy's got plans. And like unbelievably, your integrity of heart will preserve you. You know, there's a scripture that it says, even you know, if you're brought before situations and that the Lord's gonna give you words that they can neither gainsay nor resist. He will give you supernatural power and strength to stand in the midst of things that are coming at you. And as long as you have made that commitment in your heart, yes, Lord, no matter what, I will serve you. And you will have his supernatural ability to go through whatever we may go through in the days of ahead. Hallelujah. And Ken's going to talk about how we'll be promoted if we have integrity. powerful point seeing this in the days in which we live in and we will be preserved as we hold integrity in our hearts as we will doggedly stand no matter what even when the pressure is really on you know they it's it's 
it's said in the history that they had a problem in the early church because when some of the persecutions came, some of the people acquiesced. And then after the persecution was over, they wanted to come back into the church. <laughs> and they didn't know quite what to do with that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They didn't know, well, are you really saved or what? You know, they, so it was a big problem. But we are of those that will stand no matter what. As, as you have integrity in the, in the heart, you can stand up before anything and, and prevail. Hallelujah. You know, thank God that that we have that ability to walk in that depth of commitment with the Lord's help in us. You know, it's because He is in us that we're able to do these things that, that you know, ordinarily, just in our own human strength, we might never be able to do. And just like at times, you know, we're called upon to, to move in unconditional love with with others, you know, and it, it takes us to the limit of, uh, of our endurance, you know, and our, the ability of our, our ability to love, you know, and, and then you, you find you're still in that unconditional love with, with uh, persons that you're dealing with, and you don't even understand how, you know, say, I know the old me, you know, it'd be like, at the road, Jack, you know, that kind of thing, and yeah, it's, this love pours out of you, and you, after a while, it dawns on you, oh, this is the love of God, you know, this, this is Jesus in me, you know, coming out. You know, the man from heaven, the second Adam, is is manifesting in my in my bones. You know, and uh, it's the same with the commitment we have. You know, Jesus had was that committed that, and he walked headlong, straight forth into the cross for us. You know, and, and he, he did it. He was committed, it, and he went. He didn't like it. He didn't. You know, you ask God. You know, if there's any other way, let's do it. But there was no other way. So he was committed in the integrity of his heart to, to fulfill his calling and his mission for his life. So as we face the future, realize that we have that Jesus factor in us, you know, that'll help us in dark places to stand, even when we think we might not be able to. Hallelujah. You know, as we walk in integrity of heart also, we will be prospered in our lives. Let me let's look at first Kings. Uh, uh, 9 through 9, 1 through 5. Let me see. walk in the integrity of heart we will be promoted and let's look at Psalm 78 you know it's interesting that all these things are in the scriptures and and when God opens our eyes to them we see all the stuff that's there that we ordinarily might not see Psalm 78 verses uh, 70 through 72 as he comes to the end of the psalm there, it says that God chose David, also his servant, as, he's, as he talks about other people as well, and took him from the sheepfolds, from following the ewes with great with young. He brought him from those sheepfolds to feed Jacob, his people, and Israel inheritance. So he fed them, this David, according to the integrity of his heart, and guided them by the skillfulness of of his hands. Once again, we talk about David, a, a great example of a man who had integrity of heart. And God brought him from the sheepfolds, from being a shepherd, and from feeding sheep, and you know, taking care of sheep, to feeding the people of God. And from being a shepherd to being a king. You know, as we were preparing this message, once again, the Lord revealed to us and for this message that if you walk in integrity, 
you will see his plans and purposes for your life unfold before you. You'll maintain that integrity and walk in it. Because one day, if you think about it, you know the story of David. One day, that shepherd boy was tending his father's sheep, and the plan of God came looking for him. Samuel the prophet showed up at his father's house one day and anointed him to be king of Israel in the place of Saul. <laughs> so as he had integrity of heart, even as a young boy, it was careful to be tending his father's sheep, faithful in that assignment. <clears throat> One day the prophet shows up and reveals God's plan and purpose for his life and sets him on that course by anointing him. The art also revealed that he can trust you with more as you have integrity of heart because he can trust you to do the things that he commands. So he can promote you because you have the integrity that is necessary in various situations. Remember King Saul, who David replaced, lost his position in God because he would not carry out God's commands. And why was that? Saul had very little, if any, integrity of heart. Because remember, looking good and being good are two different things. You see, Saul, who lost the throne of Israel, to David looked very, very good. Let's look at 1 Samuel 9. 1 and 2. Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zerar, the son of Bechorath, the son of Ephiah, a Benjamin, a mighty man of power. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man and goodly. There was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. This was Saul. Saul was a, you know, I mean, he was like a John Wayne type, you know, he was tall and handsome and he was, he was, you know, his head and shoulders above everyone else. He, he, he's the man for the job. He looked good. He looked good. But after he was promoted to king, the integrity, lack of integrity of his heart led to his downfall. He couldn't handle what he needed to handle to stay right with God in a position of power and authority in a promoted position. He lacked integrity. He wasn't walking in that. He lacked integrity in his heart. And really, if you know the story of Saul, it led to the end of his life. And his purpose was over. You know, Saul had remained faithful to God and had integrity of his heart. He would have, they said, the Lord said, he would have, he would have continued his throne. But he had to give it to David. A man with integrity of heart to take his place. 